Hello and welcome back to Anton Math and this is trigonometric equations or rather more trigonometric equations part 4. So let's go ahead and jump in and do some problems. So 2 cosine of 3 theta is equal to 1. Now right away you might say well okay we're going to use the addition formula for cosine but be careful if we use the additional addition formula and with maybe with combination with the double angle formula for cosine here we're going to get a long chain of trigonometric functions and we could still solve the problem that way but it's going to be quite more difficult. I'm going to show you a way that we can solve this problem actually quite easily. So first I'm going to simplify this down so that I get cosine of 3 theta alone. So cosine of 3 theta is equal to 1 half. Now instead of breaking this up into a bunch of trigonometric functions by using my addition formula and trying to solve for theta I'm going to go ahead and solve for 3 theta. So if I solve for 3 theta, in other words, let's just think of this 3 theta as being the theta in all of the problems that we've done so far. So really we're looking at cosine of some variable x. We have say x equals 3 theta. First we're going to solve the problem cosine of x equals 1 half. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it in terms of 3 theta. So if we do that, we get a couple of general solutions we know that cosine will be one half when three theta is equal to pi over three plus two k pi and we also know that cosine of three theta equals one half when three theta is equal to five pi over three right five pi over three is our value in quadrant 4, the other quadrant where cosine is positive, that has a reference angle of pi over 3. And these of course are where k is in the set of all integers. Now we're not done yet, we still want to solve for theta, but look here, now it's very easy to solve for theta. Now all I have to do to get theta alone on the left hand side is to divide both of these general equations by 3. Now it's very important that you write in the general equation, or the general solution. I need this 2k pi before I divide both sides by 3. If I divide both sides by 3 first and then write plus 2k pi, I'm going to be omitting uh, really two-thirds of my solutions as we'll see here in a moment. So dividing this first uh, general equation or general solution by 3, I'm going to get the theta. Dividing the right side by 3 gives me pi over 9. And dividing 2k pi by 3 gives me 2k pi over 3. Now I can do the same thing over here. 3 theta is 5 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. So theta, oh, missed my plus sign. Theta is equal to 5 pi. Now dividing by 3 on the right, this is over 9 plus 2k pi over 3. And there we have it. This is our general solution where of course k is an arbitrary integer. Now let's just say the problem asks you to find all values of theta that are between 0 and 2 pi. So we're, let's go ahead and start plugging in some values. If we want to look for all values of theta between 0 and 2 pi, well I can plug in k equals 0 to both of my general solutions first. I'm going to get pi over 9 and 5 pi over 9. Now just to make sure we don't have anything closer to 0, if I plug in negative 1 for k in this first solution, I'm going to get pi over 9 minus 2 pi over 3, which is minus 4 pi over, or sorry, minus 6 pi over 9, which is negative 5 pi over 9. So pi over 9 is the smallest solution greater than 0 from this first general solution. And looking over here, if I plug in negative k, 5 pi over 9 minus 6 pi over 9 is a negative pi over 9. So again, that's also less than 0. So these are our smallest solutions. So we can go ahead and just increase k from 0 until we get really close to 2 pi in order to get the rest of our solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So plugging in k equals 1, remember uh, this 2 times 1 pi over 3, that's the same as 6 pi over 9, getting that denominator of 9. So that's going to give me a total of 7 pi over 9. K equals 1 in our second general solution gives me 5 pi over 9 plus 6 pi over 9, or 11 pi over 9. So now let's go ahead and plug in k equals 2. Over here that gives me 4 pi over 3, 
or in other words I have 12 pi over 9 plus 1 pi over 9 is 13 pi over 9 and plugging in k equals 2 in my second general solution that's 5 pi over 9 plus 4 pi over 3 or 12 pi over 9 which gives me 17 pi over 9 and that's it if I plug in k equals 3 I'm going to get 19 pi over 9 here and uh, over here I'll get what 23 pi over 9 uh, so we're done as soon as we get to 18 pi over 9 that's 2 pi so these are my six solutions that are in quadrant one now this should make sense to us remember when we talked about graphing cosine if I have a three here remember what that three does is we take the period of cosine two pi and we divide it by three so now my period of cosine is only one-third of it is so my period's not two pi anymore my period is two k pi over three so I'm still finding my one particular solution and now I'm adding the new period aren't I? I'm adding the period created by this 3 in my cosine. Alright, let's take a look at another one kind of in this same vein. Actually all three of the problems in this video are going to be a little bit similar. Uh, cosine of theta over 2 minus 1 equals 0. Now again I could use my half angle formula here and get some equation in terms of cosine of theta but that's not going to really help us out. Uh, all I need to do here is solve for cosine of theta over 2. So cosine of theta over 2, adding 1 to both sides, this is equal to 1. So in other words, I want to solve now for theta over 2. Cosine of theta over 2 equals 1 when theta over 2 is equal to 0, isn't it? This is my particular solution. Now I need to add my 2k pi. So in other words, theta over 2 is simply 2k pi. Well now I need to solve for theta still, so now I have my general solution for theta over 2. I can multiply both sides by 2 and I get theta is equal to 4k pi, where k is an arbitrary integer. Alright, so that one's easy peasy. Again, the theta over 2 makes it look kind of scary, but it's really not too bad as long as we solve for whatever my argument is first. Right, whatever is inside of that cosine, I solve for that first in terms of a general solution and then I can use just a little bit of arithmetic in order to isolate my unknown variable. All right, let's do one more for this video. Cosine of 2 theta minus cosine of 4 theta is equal to 0. Now be careful here, a common mistake in a problem like this is that people tend to think that they can factor this cosine of 2 theta minus cosine 4 theta is not the same thing as cosine of 2 theta times 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. Alright, be very careful here. This is bad. Alright, we cannot, uh, in other words, cosine of 4 theta is not cosine of 2 theta times cosine of 2 theta. Those arguments don't work that way. That's why we have all these trig identities. So we need to figure out another way to solve this problem. Well, I have my double angle formula, so let's take a look at that. We'll leave this cosine of 2 theta alone for now. Let's deal with this big angle of cosine of 4 theta. Remember, my double angle formula tells me that cosine of 2x, and we have lots of versions of this, but the one that contains only cosines, we don't want to mix sines into here if we don't have to, the one that contains only, two, or only cosines is 2 cosine squared x, minus 1. So this is going to be helpful. I'll be able to substitute this in for cosine 4 theta and get a quadratic which we know how to solve. Now I don't have cosine of 2 theta, I do have cosine of 4 theta so really 2 theta in my problem is playing the role of x in my formula. So in other words this is cosine of 2 times 2 theta so this equals 2 cosine squared of 2 theta minus 1, right? Matching up over here, this cosine of 4 theta, that's the same as cosine, let me write it, cosine of 4 theta is equal to cosine of 2 times 2 theta. So this 2 theta is playing the role of x here, and it's playing the role of x here. So I have 2 cosine squared of 2 theta, not just theta. 
Now this of course on the left side is equal to 0 and now I can set up my quadratic. Writing this in the right order I have negative 2 cosine squared theta plus cosine 2 theta oh I'm forgetting this is cosine squared of 2 theta after all that I just wrote theta plus cosine of 2 theta and I have minus a negative 1 so that's plus 1 is equal to 0 now I want to be able to factor this quadratic so let's go ahead and get rid of this negative in the front we'll multiply both sides by negative 1 and I get 2 cosine squared of 2 theta minus cosine of 2 theta minus 1 is equal to 0 so now I can factor I know that one of the terms in my factor is going to be a 2 cosine 2 theta in the front the other one's going to have cosine of 2 theta right these are the only choices for my factors of 2 cosine squared of 2 theta I have a negative 1 as my constant term so I know that I have a 1 at the end of both of these one of these is positive one is negative and because my central term is negative I need my negative over here that way I multiply this negative 1 by 2 cosine 2 theta and get negative 2 cosine I add to that this 1 times cosine and get a total of negative 1 cosine 2 theta so we factored this successfully this all equals 0 so now I have a product equal to 0 so I can solve this problem by looking at each of the factors of this product independently and setting them equal to 0 so I want to look at when 2 cosine 2 theta plus 1 equals 0 and I want to look at when cosine of 2 theta minus 1 is equal to 0 alright working with this left side first I want to get cosine 2 theta alone so I get cosine of 2 theta is equal to now I've subtracted 1 to both sides and divided 2 on both sides this is negative 1 half and over here I get cosine of 2 theta is equal to 1. Now this is kind of like the first problem we did in this problem set. I have an argument of 2 theta so I want to solve for what values of 2 theta do I need to get cosine of 2 theta is negative 1 half or cosine of 2 theta is equal to 1. So first I have 2 theta cosine of 2 theta is equal to negative 1 half in quadrant 3 when 2 theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 and that's going to be 2 pi over 3 plus 2k pi remember we need to generalize this before we divide by 2 I also have a cosine of neg cosine is negative 1 in quadrant uh, 3, I think I misspoke, this is in quadrant 2 in quadrant 3 cosine is negative 1 half when 2 theta is equal to 4 pi over 3 and of course I have this plus 2k pi and from this side over here cosine of 2 theta equals 1 whenever 2 theta is equal to, we know cosine is 1 when theta is equal to 0, here that's going to be the same as 2 theta equals 0 or in other words, um, well let's just write it out, uh, 0 plus 2k pi or simply 2k pi. Right now I have my general equations and this of course is all when k is an integer I have my general equations for 2 theta so dividing both sides by 2 I get theta is equal to uh, the 2's cancel so this is pi over 3 and again the 2's cancel so plus k pi dividing both sides by 2 here 4 over 2 is 2 so I have theta equals 2 pi over 3 plus k pi and here dividing both sides by 2 I get theta is equal to k pi for an arbitrary integer k. And there we have it. This is a perfectly acceptable answer. Now we can do a little bit better. We've solved the problem, but it's always best to give the simplest answer possible. And for us to find a simpler answer, we need a little more space. So I'm going to get rid of what we did up here in the top right corner. So let's take a look 
at the angles that we have here now in standard position. So this is my xy plane in standard position. Pi over 3 plus k pi consists of all angles whose terminal sides fall on either of these rays here. Right, so let's just say this angle between my initial side and this yellow line is pi over 3. Now 2 pi over 3 plus k pi is going to be all angles that fall on either of these rays here. And k pi is all angles that fall on either of these rays here. So any angle that is coterminal with one of these rays is going to be a possible solution for my equation. So we can do a little bit better looking at this a little analytically. I have that this is pi over 3, or in other words, I'm starting from my first solution 0. I can add pi over 3 to get to my second solution. I can add pi over 3 to get to my third solution, which is 2 pi over 3. Adding pi over 3 gets me to my fourth solution, which is pi. Adding pi over 3 gets me to my fifth solution, which is 4 pi over 3 and adding pi over 3 gets me to 5 pi over 3, which is my sixth solution within one period. So really, I can write all of these as theta is equal to, I have 0 as one of my solutions, and I can add any increment of pi over 3, or I can subtract any increment of pi over 3 to get another solution, and all solutions can be obtained by adding or subtracting increments of pi over 3, so theta just equals k pi over 3, where k is an arbitrary integer. Right? The box I have down there in purple is fine as a solution. I would accept that on one of my tests, but this right here, this is our optimal solution. This is the best solution we can have for this problem. It's simple and it's very elegant. All right, that's it for this video. I'm going to do one more video of examples of these solving trig equations, so we'll see you there.